So this is how the inside of the box is looking currently without the rack unit to hold the batteries. And as you see at the top there, that's where the fan is. Sitting up there quite nicely. Now if I come into the box. And then this is where the, the rack unit's gonna sit. As you see, all the floor is all sealed up. So it should be all good to go. So let's put the rack unit in. So what we did was we got four sheets, I think, of 16mm MDF and we cut that up and then pretty much made a rack out of it. So two big sides and then shelving units for all the shelving pieces for the middle parts. So this is how the rack is looking outside. None of the middle dividers are in because we don't really need that right now. So it's all set to go inside. If we can lift it in because it weighs quite a bit and really let's just have a look inside this box so if i come inside the box you'll see that the rack is in here nicely what i'll do is just very quickly before i show you that actually so we've got the the vents down the bottom my piles of uh this this is the cuts to go in between the um the shelves so i'll show you that now so you'll see that i've placed three of those in there now a couple of things, a couple of really important things. First of all, I made two stuff ups. Stuff up, uh, stuff up number one was the fan location um, and this part here. I should have cut down and cut this piece out um, rather than having it sitting right beside the fan. Now, there is enough clearance um, for the fan to be able to suck air. There's quite a bit of clearance in there. But it would have been um, nicer if I had cut this part down. So that was potentially stuff up number one. Um, and potentially the fan could have been better on the back wall rather than the side wall. However, the side wall means you can't see it. This wall here would mean that it's very obvious. There's a big, you know, there's a, a vent um, on the kind of the, the driveway side. But, so that's one stuff up. That was kind of a minor stuff up. The biggest stuff up, and if I come all the way back, the biggest stuff up was the distance between the floor and the roof when i made the actual box it should have been about 100 or 200 mil higher um, now we did actually have enough clearance on the window height outside so um but it really i really should have planned the rack then the box and then kind of how it all goes together but it's one of those things is that as you're building it it's just kind of you you just take what you kind of get and just try and figure out as much as, you, as possible but um yeah, kind of the planning stage should have maybe had more time spent on it. So what did that mean? Well, it meant that the, between the top of this part here, under here, and the top and the bottom, is a distance of about, I think, about 1380. Um, and what that's meant is that the height of each of the, the gaps in between where the cells are going to sit, or each of the, the packs are going to sit, has been reduced far more than I would have liked. So we don't have a massive gap. What I would have liked is the batteries or the cells to sit in here and then to be a nice big air gap between the, the top of the cell and the top of the the um, the or the shelf. And unfortunately, there's not much of a gap. So we have still had to do 14S, obviously. So 14 cells will come, well, 14 packs will come all the way down here. Um, we'll put these things in here in between each of the packs and that'll separate them from pack one and, and pack, two, uh, pack two, for example, um, this will be one 10 kilowatt hour pack and the next 10 kilowatt hour pack, etc, etc. So, as you can see, the rack's actually going to be able to support around 50 kilowatt hours. So that's absolutely crazy when you think of how much um, space is needed to, to put 50 kilowatt hours in. Now, potentially I wouldn't put 50 kilowatt hours in, but you can definitely do so. Um, what that means is that because each of this, this just this one row here, all the way down to the floor, and 80p backwards all the way to the to the back there, you can fit probably 95p. But let's just say it was 80p, and that's so that's 10 kilowatt hours down, 10 kilowatt hours down, 10 kilowatt hours down, 
and then again so there's five sets of that um, it's a very very tight fit to fit um, the five banks of 10 kilowatt hours in here but it, it's a definitely achievable uh, I tested it the other day I could fit five packs across um, and I could fit 80p packs so yeah that would be fine so yeah it's really 50 kilowatt hours in this small little space and that's one of the really big advantages of using a, a vertical rack or a horizontal rack is just that you can fit so many cells in there now the second thing that you might already have noticed is that there's a discoloration on the wood and the reason for that is we've used five um, retarded paint so for example, all what we've done is we've painted all the tops of all the of all the, the shelves in a, a fire um, resistant paint. So it's not uh, the paint that will foam up and kind of get all um, the paint sacrifices itself and it foams up. If, for example, it's exposed to a naked flame, um, it's the it's the type of paint or yeah type of paint that will just not light. Um, so. That was kind of the easiest way to go about it, and I could get it for free. So that was really handy. Um, so we've painted pretty much all the tops have all been painted, of all the shelves. The whole back of the battery box has been painted. This wall's been painted. As you can see, it's a different color to this one here. So this has all been painted. We've painted the tops, the sides, and that goes all the way down throughout the whole um, this end of the box so it's not a perfect solution so what that means is that the when the cells are in here and you've got we'll use this as an example when the cells are in here they come up to about here so it's about a centimeter and a half and this is the problem is that it's much closer to the top that I really would have liked but unfortunately there's not much I can do about that now um, a centimeter and a half remember the tops only got a fuse on it so as long as there's a gap in between, you know, the fuse isn't touching a piece of wood, then that's good. Um, and the next step after that was obviously painting it to make sure that just in case the fuse wire got hot for an extended period of time, that um, the wood wouldn't um, start to burn. Now, obviously, it hasn't got a naked flame up against it, so um, there's an advantage there. Um, so we've done as much um, work in that respect as possible to make sure it's as safe as possible. Uh, but, you know, at least you've kind of got to put a box in a metal case that's in the middle of the grass in a separate thing well away from the house, um, you know, to be as fire conscious as possible. Um, you can kind of go from one extreme to the other. Um, and what we've tried to do is mitigate um, as much risk as possible. And one of those things is that how many times have you ever seen an 18650 cell in a laptop battery um, catch fire? Um, I can't think of actually one instance that I've actually seen it. I have seen many cell phones and, and lithium polymer cells or the flat pack cells um, catch fire, but never seen an 18650 cell in a laptop battery ever catch fire. Um, that hasn't been someone being a bit idiotic and just putting a flame to it and waiting for it to explode. So um, in that respect, you know, it's it should be fine. The only thing that should blow is a fuse. Um, you know, and that's really the, the thing that we're trying to um, mitigate against as much as possible. So, racks in. Um, these are in. The next stage, what I'll do is I'll just quickly grab an a ADP pack that I've made up. Um, there's another video coming out all about that, but let's just, I'll just grab one so you can kind of see how it looks in here, and then we'll go from there. Right, so this is an ADP pack, and I'll try and do this with one hand so you can kind of see how it's going to look. So, if I pick this up, and slide this up to here, I'm doing this with one hand, you'll see, and kind of get that in there, that that's how ADP looks. We've got positives at the top, negatives at the bottom, this can be much closer to it, and you can now see the clearance, which isn't going to show it that well, but it's about two centimeters to the top of the box, or well, sorry, the top of the um, the shelf. So it's not, ex like I said before, it's not 100% great. Uh, I would have liked far more of a gap, but don't have, don't have much of a choice anymore. So we're just gonna roll with it and um, um, try and make it as safe as possible. So as you can see, that's ADP, and I've got it sticking out a little bit, and I can push that pretty much all the way back quite far. 
um, to about there. So that will mean that I can put about a 95p, almost 100p pack in each of these um, bays. And obviously that's going to be, if I did that, uh, it would be well over 50 kilowatt hours. But it, even if I had it sticking out that much, um, it, you know, I can easily fit probably 100 cells there. So each of the, yeah, the great thing about this is obviously everything can, um, everything fits in such a small space um, that you can kind of compact things. Now, if I was recommending this to anyone else to building a rack like this, I would highly suggest that you have more of a spacing at the top of the cells. Uh, unfortunately for my, for me, the, my measurements weren't 100% fantastic, but um, yeah, we'll just have to roll with it. So yeah, that goes like that, and then this will be far further back, it'll be something like this, this will come out like that, and then if I push that in there, then the next pack will go in here, and then obviously that would be f four or five banks of 10 kilowatt hours. So 10 kilowatt hours going down, 14S all the way down there, that's what we're going to be putting in pretty much the next video. So next video will be putting all these packs in, so and rearranging all these packs to make them um, ADP packs. So see, thanks for guys for watching. See you guys in the next video. Um, comment if you uh, haven't yet, and subscribe if, again if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching.